Hi. Is audio working? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, last time it was uh, not really working on my side. Thank you. But Craig, you were a little faint. It's kind of. I, I hear some static on the line in audio. Uh, I will turn mine off and see if it helps. Yeah. No static. I don't now. know why. I, we had that problem before, but I don't know why it happens. But I stay mute yeah. just most of the time. Yeah, uh, I'll do the same. Hello everyone, thanks for joining and we are still waiting for more people to join. Uh, there are 10 participants right now. Thank you. Actually, yeah, he told me yesterday that there is a holiday trying to join.
again, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we were waiting for uh, more people to join. Um, we are now at 11 participants and six minutes past the start time. Um, so Loa, Nick, do you think we should, uh, we expect more people to join or we need to I get think, started? I think you can start. Okay. All right. I, I know we're missing a couple of regular attendees, but uh, hopefully they will join in the middle of discussions. Okay, the, uh, yeah, this is Eric, the, one, one thing. Uh, we are missing Mac, who I thought would show up. Uh, do we have people taking notes? Uh, I wouldn't be able if I'm sharing, but if I'm not sharing, then I will uh, be able to. I was, you know, I was going to remind uh, everyone to uh, do that in a second, but let's do that now. And I will uh, paste the URL for the minutes so people can help take minutes. Okay, so if you flip to the chat, I did uh, pass a link where we're taking the minutes. Uh, please consider taking minutes uh, if you have, um, you know, if, if you if you can. All right, let's get started. So this is the MPLS m and interim uh, for uh, today. Uh, this is part of a series that we've set up and uh, I can't remember, this is, uh, this is uh, meeting number five, but doesn't matter much. Uh, and as usual, this is uh, a collaboration between three multiple, uh, between three uh, working groups and uh, we have participation hopefully from all three. <clears throat> this is an official interim, uh, so the ritual of presenting the note well um, needs to be done. Uh, I will presume that uh, most people have read uh, the best uh, current practices, and, uh, and if not, please do so. Again, as usual, we're presenting multiple helpful uh, links uh, uh, for the minute taking. Um, it was a chance uh, to remind everyone, if they can, to help in taking the minutes. Other useful links are on the slide. Uh, today, we will be discussing uh, um, besides taking the action items, we have a presentation by Huayu, and I'm bashing the agenda today, and it's your chance to, um, you know, either uh, update or remove or add um, anything that you'd like to uh, see on today's agenda. So if you have any other item we, we, you'd like to discuss, please come to the mic. <clears throat> okay, I don't see anyone besides Loa, and I'm hoping Loa is not yeah, he did turn off the mic. Um, <clears throat> so we have a list of action items. I was hoping to switch to it, uh, um, but I will have to turn off my sharing. Uh, I still have one slide, and it is part of the action items. So let me flip to the slide, and then I will go to updating the action items uh, um, after going through that slide. So one of the action items that we are tracking, uh, let me flip to it and we can update them as we go. Um, 
was why beer picked up the value five for MPLS first nibble. And uh, I did um, investigate the uh, RFC 8296 where they did, uh, you know, the MPLS encapsulation for beer. And they introduced this uh, allocation of value five for the nibble. Uh, the claim is they are doing that uh, so that they don't confuse uh, ECMP logic on transit LSRs as usual. Uh, <clears throat> So not to confuse it with any other IP uh, packet uh, for uh, load sharing. Um, but the more interesting part also is the uh, a BFR that receives a packet with any other value in the first nibble, it should discard the packet. So they're, they're actually using it as a sanity as well. So if a BFR, which could be a transit LSR, receives such a uh, such a packet and it's not five then the first nibble is not five then they're counting it as a invalid packet and i thought this is in line with our discussion of allocating a value and uh, uh, i don't see also stewart here but at least last time we uh, we had talked about similar ideas of allocating a value uh, on letting the transit LSR do insanity on it rather than uh, reliably. Uh, so some other indication in the packet will uh, will dictate that this is an MNA and then the first nibble would do sanity. But in any case, this is about beer first nibble and the beer first nibble as they are, uh, you know, they document here, they've allocated five uh, for two reasons. One is the ECMP logic. The second is a sanity kind of thing. So that's number one. And I will stop a little bit here. And if anyone wants to comment or uh, ask questions. Uh, I see Loa is raising his hand. So please go ahead. Yeah, quick question. So is this enough and we can close the uh, action item? Or do we really... Do we need to go and ask uh, the beer working group or the beer shares explicitly? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, um, from my investigation, I can see the reason why they picked the value five. Um, if anyone want, still has any uh, doubt, uh, we can definitely reach out to the working group. But to me, it's clear why the first nibble value five, uh, at least from their perspective, um, is there. They could have used uh, value zero if they didn't want to do sanity. So value zero would have served a, a purpose of not confusing ECMP, but it wouldn't have allowed a BFR to do sanity check. So basically dropping the packet uh, if it's not what they expect. Um, so they have allocated the value five for these two purposes. And for me, I can close this action item, but I wanted to talk about two more things uh, before that. Uh, maybe we'll track them with different action items, but uh, you know, at least the first nibble, I'm happy with um, closing the action item. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about, and maybe, uh, and I did present the header, the beer header for that reason, is they have an entropy inside the, if you notice that they have, uh, um, you know, presented a, uh, a header for uh, the payload of MPLS. And the first nibble is obviously the first nibble. They have also a version which comes right after the first nibble. And then they are sending the entropy there. So this has intersection with, <clears throat> it might have intersection with MNA as well, because we, we intend to carry entropy uh, uh, either in stack or uh, you know, as part of the MNA um, uh, uh, metadata. Uh, 
And um, so the, the two things that I wanted to draw your attention is with the version and the entropy. And, uh, and the next action item that I'm going to open up. So which is the intersection of MNA with other uh, existing features like beer. So uh, hopefully this, uh, you know, this can trigger discussion on the next action item, which is um, how did we, um, how do we intend to uh, address um, a packet carrying MNA payload as well as other uh, MPLS um, existing uh, features payload? And if that's already addressed, um, maybe some can, can confirm, but at least as far as I know, it's not. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing anyone coming to the mic, so hopefully I made this uh, descriptive enough. Uh, so anyone has any update about uh, how do we um, tackle MNA payload or post stack data uh, with existing post stack data, MPLS existing post stack data, like beer, a beer packet. And if not, I can update the action item uh, as uh, uh, we need to tackle that in the future. Okay, I will. Uh, I will take a couple of seconds uh, just to send my son to the other room, and uh, I'll, I'll be back in uh, ten seconds. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, anyone has any update on uh, on this? I guess uh, maybe I missed something or no? No. Okay, I can move on. Um, let me just make sure that I'm tracking the update on my action item list. All right, so the third action item I'm tracking is a dead net discussion uh, with MA, uh, you know, intersection with MA as well. Uh, we have Greg scheduled to give the presentation on July 6th. Um, so this, this is, uh, serves as a reminder. And the status of this is still open. And uh, the last action item from last week was an update to the uh, to the draft, uh, MA drafts, uh, the specifically the, the requirements and the framework drafts. And uh, we wanted to make sure that these drafts cover the LSR's behavior when multiple ISDs are in the packet. Uh, <clears throat> and if multiple ISDs are in the indeed in the packet, should the top ISD be a superset of the ISD that follows after, or they don't need to. Uh, and the last point that we, we discussed last week was if we have ISD repeated for the purpose of readable depth uh, on LSRs, so this is one thing we discussed, uh, 
modifying the top one only might uh, yield to inconsistency. So these three bullets I am tracking and they're against the requirements and the framework draft. Um, the owners of this action items are the authors of the, or the editors of the drafts. So <clears throat> hopefully they can give me an update on, uh, on these. I am not sharing the wiki because it's not easy for me to switch to the wiki, but I'll give the, the link for the action items wiki. Okay, it's it's strangely uh, uh, not so uh, active today, uh, um, but uh, I'm hoping that everyone can hear me. Okay. Uh, yeah, we hear you fine. No problem. Great. Thank you for the acknowledgement. Um, that was the last action item I have. And uh, going back to the agenda, I can pass um, the ball to YU because I think I don't have his slides. Let me check if, uh, no, I don't have any slides. <clears throat> so um, YU was supposed to present, so are you able to share your slides for you? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm granting yeah. you permission to share. Actually, the slides were uploaded for last meeting, so I forgot to do that. That's. Oh, I that's... see. I, I did not see them, so yeah. Uh, if you have them in your machine, you should be able to share. Okay. Um... Are you? Yeah, I'm trying to find it, yeah. I think you need to click on uh, the screen-like uh, button. Yeah, okay. I yeah. already opened it. Can you see it? Yes, yeah. I can see it. Yeah, yes. okay. So, um, yeah, thank you for giving me this time to give this presentation. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a uh, use case um, for um, using the post post that data for m &A. But before that, I'd like to um, give a quick overview of the uh, unpass telemetry uh, technologies. Um, so in case you are familiar uh, with this, um, please bear with me. Um, because this is a quite uh, relevant uh, to our discussion and uh, we have uh, uh, used it as a key uh, motivating um, use case for the MNA work. Um, so we call this unpass tele uh, telemetry because uh, it's all involved um, to uh, collect the real-time telemetry data uh, on the user traffic itself. But it's, uh, the technology uh, details uh, are very uh, quite uh, uh, significantly. Um, Basically, we can partition uh, the existing technologies into three different categories. One, we call that pass passport mode, uh, which means uh, um, the information is carried in the user package and uh, at every node on the pass, some new data will be added to it. And another uh, branch is called postcard mode. Uh, in this uh, uh, in this mode, the data will not be carried in the user user packet. Instead, it's uh, sent out to uh, some data collector as using a standalone uh, independent um, packet. And uh, the user packet itself may only um, carry the in some instruction header to tell the node what data to collect. Um, another different uh, technology in this category is that um, the, the packet doesn't 
carry any uh, instru actual instruction, but just uh, carry uh, some kind of flag or trigger in it. And the, the node itself is already configured on what data to send out in case uh, the trigger is found. So we call this a marking-based postcard mode. And finally, there's a, another type of technology actually uh, trying to combine the both a passport mode and the postcard mode. Uh, we call that ha hybrid mode. So IOM trees uh, in RFC 9187 is an example of, of the passport mode technology. And the IOM DX in RFC 9326 is an example of the instruction-based postcard mode technology. And we have another draft called the PBTM, um, which is a marking-based postcard mode technology. And there's a, yet another draft called hybrid two steps, which is a hybrid mode technology. So we have already active drafts or RPCs for each of this, each of this technology. Why we have uh, so many variations? Because, uh, oh, sorry, if we can't uh, look at the table, uh, each of them has its own pros and cons. And therefore, uh, depending on the actual application scenario, we can uh, choose one of them to use. And it's uh, up to the user to decide which one best suits their needs. And let's see what's the pros of the passport mode. Um, first of all, uh, since the data is carried in the user a user packet, then the data is automatically uh, correlated, uh, and it's very clear this uh, this uh, order set of data belong to this packet, this flow. So it's uh, no need to um, correlate the data again, and also um, the data is only exported once at the end of the pass. Um, so therefore, it's um, kind of efficient in. Uh, bandwidth usage. And also, the, it has a low configuration overhead because only the <clears throat> head node and, uh, and the tail node need to be configured. Um, uh, the other node, inter intermediate node, only need to um, you know, uh, collect the data add, and add data to the packet uh, based on the instruction header. And finally, it uh, has, has low bandwidth uh, consumption uh, compared with the other schemes. But it has a, has a, uh, uh, it's a drawbacks. Uh, the first one is, um, yeah, it does need to uh, change the packet at every node, and which uh, will inflate the packet size. If you have a very uh, long pass, then the data added to the packet will be significant. And also, it has an encapsulation need uh, because um, it's a big chunk of data uh, in uh, any uh, transport protocol. You have to consider where to encapsulate this uh, instruction header and the data. And uh, it has its own security vulnerability, although there are some um, other drafts talking about how to uh, authenticate uh, the data. Um, but uh, Basically, the, the we have no time to um, to in, to to encrypt the data, so it's basically the plain data will be carried in the packet, and uh, you know if the data were intercepted by the uh, malicious uh, users or some other attackers, they will they will get uh, such maybe very sensitive information in the network, and also. It has a data packet fit sharing problem, which means once a user packet is dropped, the data also lost, and uh, then you 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 won't know where the data is uh, um, packet is dropped. So it, it's difficult to figure out that. And on the other hand, if we can, for the postcard mode, it has many advantages. 
The first one is it has a low or near zero packed overhead. Uh, for the IOM DX, uh, it does have some overhead and, and instruction headers still need to be included. But for the PBTM, for the marking based postcard mode, maybe the only uh, single, single bit in the exi existing header field is needed to indicate that. So its overhead is uh, relatively low compared with uh, postcard mode. And also um, the encapsulation may be avoided, but uh, uh, it's, it's only true for the marking based postcard mode. For the instruction based, we still need to consider encapsulation, uh, even though the header, the instruction header itself is uh, smaller. And it's potentially more secure in, uh, in, this, um, in this mode because um, we, we will use a stand in standalone or independent postcard packet to send the, <coughs> send the uh, collected data. So we can afford to do more, uh, take more security measures to those packets. For example, to in, 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 in encrypt it there. Um, because then doing this, um, well, we don't necessarily to delay the user traffic transport because they, they can directly go through the routers uh, or switches as before. Um, also, well, you, you, to interrupt, do, do, do you like questions to the end or? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we if have, you have a question, you can raise it anytime, I think. It's a anytime? Okay. We have mm -hmm. a, a question from Greg uh, at the moment. Okay. So please, we can take it now, Greg, if you want. Um, thank you for the overview. Uh, I have a couple of things I would like to note. Um, uh, it appears that um, in this uh, uh, classification, uh, two parts of uh, on-path telemetry uh, being mixed up. Uh, the first one is uh, generating uh, operational state telemetry information, and second part is collecting and transporting such information. So if we look uh, at uh, how uh, on-path telemetry protocols uh, listed here work, then um, it probably would do, look differently because um, from generating information, uh, there is no difference between RFC 9197 and RFC 9326 uh, because they use the same IAM header that uh, uh, includes a descriptor of um, informational elements um, expected to be collected or generated. Um, alternate marking method, if uh, marking based uh, refers to the alternate marking method, works differently. And uh, what information being uh, collected uh, is uh, not explicitly specified, uh, although it can usually be used uh, to measure packet loss and packet delay. Uh, but then uh, we can look at and analyze how uh, information being collected and transported. Then there is a difference, obvious difference between um, 9197 and 9326, because 9197, uh, as you pointed out, uh, collects and transports in a, a data packet, or we can call it a trigger packet. Whereas in 1927, uh, 26, so uh, direct export, um, their RFC does not specify. So it's uh, out of band and can be collected uh, using uh, any uh, management buses or uh, hybrid mode or actually hybrid two-step uh, protocol because hybrid two-step protocol is not intended uh, to uh, generate measurements but only to collect and transport uh, operational state telemetry information that being uh, generated using for example IEM direct export or alternate marking method 
So as such, um, hybrid two-step is addressing only part of the problem, which as you pointed out, for example, for the postcard mode or what mode that you refer as a postcard, um, it simplifies the correlation of information because it collects along the path traversed by the trigger packet. So I find that um, probably this classification can be uh, uh, modified to clearly point to uh, <coughs> two phases uh, that on-path uh, telemetry includes generating information and collecting transporting information for uh, post-processing. So in that case, uh, I don't see much difference between um, two IEM RFCs. So the information generated uh, uses the same method. Uh, yeah, um, thank you for the comments. And uh, indeed, in this figure, we uh, didn't cover all the available uh, on past technology, uh, TLMG technologies. Uh, one of them you mentioned is the alternate marking. Um, but if you look at this figure, uh, here we only focus on the uh, on those set of technology which need to collect uh, data on every node on the path. A node includes uh, some end-to-end -end, uh, type of technologies. So if I, I refer the IOM trees only uh, in RFC 9197, but actually in uh, 9197, there are uh, different options for IOM, including the end-to-end. -end. Um, but uh, that's all of uh, the discussion here because we only compare uh, this, this set of uh, uh, drops or RFC list here, uh, technology mentioned here is uh, those uh, similar with a similar goal uh, to collect data on the on the pass on the pass nodes every nodes hop by hop mode so that's um, a I, focus I would uh, yeah thank you uh, I would argue that alternate marking method uh, is not in, um, exclusively end to end and uh, as was demonstrated uh, from the first publication as experimental document and now as a full standard. Uh, the transit nodes um, are capable of uh, measuring packet loss and um, packet delay uh, and um, obviously um, some other information can be uh, associated with these uh, measurements because um, packet can be inserted in a batch but uh, I think it's uh, outside the scope uh, of your presentation and uh, let's proceed further thank you yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, let me continue uh, for the uh, discussion on the postcard mode uh, advantages, and in, uh, in addition to it's uh, more secure, and also it has a, a better property to detect the pack drop location, um, because um, um, because each node on the path will send a postcard as a user packet drop somewhere. And the previous postcards are still available with the partial data. And uh, of, of course, after that, uh, um, you can no longer see the postcard for this packet. Uh, then uh, at least you, you, you can still collect partial data. Uh, it's useful uh, to debug the network, uh, finding out where the packet is actually dropped. So that's a good um, feature of postcard mode. But again, the postcards mode has its own um, disadvantages. The first one is uh, uh, data correlation, because each uh, node will send a piece of uh, data to uh, a collector. So you, the collector will get a, a set of uh, this uh, postcard. And there might be many other packets or many other flows or all, the, all send the postcard packets. So, the, the collector need to correlate these uh, um, postcards to make sure which set of postcards belong to a, a, a same original user packet. Um, this is sometimes is uh, uh, not easy to do. You need some um, uh, extra measures to, to, to achieve that. Uh, for example, in the IOM uh, direct ex export, we have to in, uh, add some uh, uh, optional data fields 
to indicate the um, packet ID and the flow ID and something like that, and to help the collector to correlate this data. Um, and for the uh, PBTM, for the marking-based uh, um, uh, postcard mode, it's a, the data correlation task is, is even harder. So we need to um, take many uh, serious measures to, to achieve that. And also, uh, secondly, it has a high, higher data export overhead because uh, each node will send a standalone uh, postcard packet, uh, which is, has its own header uh, and the data. So there's some of obvious uh, the, the some redundancies, and uh, such data uh, will in, increase uh, network bandwidth consumption. And also, it has a higher configuration overhead. Um, each node, uh, especially for the marking-based postcard, uh, we have to configure. Um, uh, each node uh, through the management plane uh, before the operation uh, to tell them, okay, once you see the trigger, what you will do? Um, this need to be done to all the node in the network because uh, we can even predict uh, where the packet will actually go through uh, in, uh, uh, because uh, we don't know the path for the packet beforehand. And so this high co configuration overhead is a problem uh, of it. And the last, uh, some for at least for the IOM DX, the encapsulation is still needed. Um, the, 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 the problem is similar to the passport mode. So we have to figure out how to encapsulate this header. So, so we can see <clears throat> uh, each of these technology has its own pros and cons. And uh, therefore, uh, as a um, the protocol uh, designer uh, like us, um, we, 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 we just need to provide some mechanism to support them. We can know to make a decision for the users because we don't know what's their application scenario, uh, what's their pref uh, preference to use these technologies. Uh, I think uh, each of them has a um, place um, in this uh, spectrum, um, so so we'd better uh, honor that and uh, uh, not exclude any of them uh, at this point. Uh, that means in our M and A design, uh, we should try to make the mechanism to uh, be able to support any of this. So any um, other questions on this slide? Uh, Greg, you still have your hand raised. <coughs> is, is there a question? Is there another question? Yes, it's a new question. OK. OK, thank you. Uh, OK, so um, what I see is that uh, the way how you structured uh, analysis I think that um, some conclusions that I cannot agree, uh, because if we look uh, and if we look at how data being collected and uh, transported, then I agree with your um, cons, but uh, not entirely, because uh, now we need to look at hybrid two-step, which allows. Uh, simplify data correlation as um, information being collected along the path that traversed uh, the trigger packet. So that's sim uh, significant simplification. Uh, also, uh, it minimizes, uh, it reduces the uh, export overhead because uh, information being collected, uh, not sent uh, from each um, node, uh, separately so that uh, encapsulation is uh, shared. Um, uh, the other thing is that what I want to point in, and I see consider it to be a benefit of direct export uh, or postcard mode as you refer to it, is that it can be done out of band. So um, not to use the same resources as used by their um, uh, data traffic. So, um, although, uh, yes, uh, 
telemetry information is um, helpful, but it's not critical. So that's uh, definitely it can uh, use a uh, uh, different class of service uh, some, uh, from their uh, management plane. Um, and I don't really uh, um, agree that uh, we should not analyze the benefits and consider benefits that uh, are characteristic to one method or another uh, when we decide of what would be uh, supported and standardized in MPLS network. Because if we understand the implication uh, that particular method is uh, will cause in MPLS data plane, uh, we need to be cognizant and aware of it and uh, not let everything uh, go. Uh, so in some other data plane, uh, people may choose, uh, may make a different choice, but I don't think that uh, the approach that anything goes and anything lets in the MPLS network uh, is a productive approach. Thank you. <coughs> okay, and any other question or comments? I'm actually in line. Yes, please, go ahead, Laura. Uh, so, uh, one reminder, uh, the reason we started those discussions on use cases was re rather to understand whether we use P need to have PSD in uh, m and uh, And uh, I think uh, if we want to discuss uh, MPLS IOM in general, we should actually dedicate a presentation for that and try to focus on the question why we had it. This is not to say that we don't need the overview here. I think that was good. And the discussion is actually also uh, enlightened. But we should try to concentrate on the questions asked. Thanks. OK. OK. Um, One, so, thank you, so. One more question from me. Um, mm -hmm. Is the ability of every router in the postcard mode to export um, uh, OEM data? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the postcard mode, I'm assuming the direct export mode, every router has to be able to export uh, this uh, OEM data uh, because it's not carried in the packet. It's done out of band. Is that a, a pro or a con? Is that something good or bad? Um, first of all, I, I don't think it's necessary to uh, force every um, node on the path to be able to send the postcard data. Um, the only requirement is that uh, the node will not drop the packet carrying carrying the instruction header, right? But if it's not capable uh, or is too busy to do that, it can ignore uh, this instruction uh, header without sending a postcard. So and I think that's a uh, that, that's fine uh, because as long as um, uh, some some data were collected is still useful for the you know to to analyze uh, to measure the performance of the network. Um, so okay. so I think it's a it's a pro actually uh, for the postcard mode. You know, um, even the you you can collect a, a partial set of the postcard is a better than you've got nothing, right? OK, thank you. Yeah, um, now let's continue. Um, so next slides. So next slides, I'm talking, going to talk about um, a use case um, <clears throat> for the P P PSD. Uh, we call that across the main internetworking use case. Uh, assume in the network we have uh, multiple um, different network domains with each, with each for if each of it run a different um, protocol. For example, <clears throat> between the two IPv6 domains, we will have an MPS tunnel uh, between that. 
and uh, for the from the network operator perspective we'd like to collect the uh, uh, telemetry data on every node uh, on this networking pass uh, that is we want to support hop by hop iom trees um even the tunnel innate we'd like to use a, a so-called uniform mode uh, to 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 make every node in the tunnel uh, visible to the network operator uh, which means we want to also collect data on uh, each mps uh, node um, in this in this uh, scenario so in that case suppose um, the user uh, decide to use uh, IO, uh, IOM trees <coughs> in IPv6 encapsulation. Uh, uh, depending, uh, uh, according to a, a current active draft, uh, it uh, describes a method to encapsulate the IOM, IOM header and the data in, the, in the, one of the extension header in IPv6. And uh, if this packet will uh, go through this MPS tunnel uh, in a uniform mode, so um, the behavior should be we, we would copy um, this uh, uh, extension uh, IOM uh, header from the instruction uh, from, from the extension header of IPv6 to the MPS PSD. Um, and uh, then in the MPS network, the actual uh, IOM data will be added to the to to the BSD, um, uh, as shown in this figure. Um, when this packet uh, leaves this uh, MPS domain, and the MPS header will be removed, now the entire uh, uh, IOM data will be copied back to the IPv6 extension header field. Uh, to overwrite the previous um, uh, previous one or the old one. So now um, the IOM header will contain all the data collected on uh, every node domains field. Um, so um, comply uh, applies to uh, other type of actions for for which um, uh, if the data size is too large, it's unsuitable for the ISD encapsulation, it need to be carried the post stack. Uh, uh, it's a need uh, for, uh, because uh, uh, in the other domain, it will be carried, you will carry the user uh, in the extension header. <clears throat> and then it's moved to the MPS, we need to keep the data intact, the format intact. And because of the size of the data, it's, um, um, it's um, impossible or improper to be uh, encoded in the um, in the in, uh, in stack. <clears throat> so we believe uh, so IOM at least here is a is a solid case um, to support the use of uh, uh, post stack data. And then this uh, last slide try to uh, answer some of the uh, chair questions. Um, so first of all, this uh, cross domain IOM uh, is um, uh, can be considered as a motivation for the PSD. Uh, and uh, we don't think this um, case can be solved with a SD. Um, first of all, because um, the overhead uh, could be quite large. Even we consider a rel relatively simple scenario with a small number of uh, uh, hops in the network, and it will uh, and the small amount of data to be collected at each for each hop. Uh, then the data uh, when we add up the data, the, the header size will still be too big uh, to fit in the uh, ISD. Um, for for example, if uh, 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 here, here, if we have a uh, two um, border routers, so just one P routers in the um, um, MPS domain, and the only even we only add one RSC size of the data. Um, so in the, our simple network scenario, we will require at least nineteen uh, label switch elements size of data. 
So that's uh, that's obviously too big. Um, then we can expect to, that that real network will be more complex than this. Um, then the VTMO makes the uh, stack size just just uh, in, in uh, grow grow to be um, prohibitively large. Uh, so next question is um, um, if we can. Um, if this PSD solution is actually less complex than SD, I think, I think the answer is uh, uh, sure. Um, um, because, uh, you know, even if you try to encode um, uh, any um, you know, header in the SD, you, first, of, first thing you need to uh, transform the header itself. Or modify this format because uh, in the SD is limited by the SD data in, in encoding uh, limitations. Uh, for example, there is always a bottom bottom of stack bit in there. You, know, uh, you, you cannot overwrite that bit, and there's some other encoding uh, constraints uh, described in the SD draft. So uh, it's um, cumbersome. And difficult to um, actually trans make the transformation. So uh, the easiest way is just to keep the header intact and uh, hold it in the PSD as a whole. Then we can move it back and forth uh, when we cross uh, go cross some boundary of the domains. Um, and also this uh, by doing this we we. Don't increase the uh, stack uh, stack depths. Uh, keep it the same as before. Um, I think this uh, <coughs> uh, will be uh, is a uh, can be potentially uh, deployed uh, within the next uh, product cycle um, because uh, we already have a mature um, uh, uh, drafts right now. Uh, 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 we have a scheme, and uh, it's a uh, very straightforward to implement that once we have uh, the draft ready. And um, the last question is: uh, Is it compatible? Uh, there's a are there any com compatibility issue with PSD? Uh, I think this is a general to all the use cases of trying to use PSD. Right, we uh, have seen some existing um, works, uh, uh, like um, uh, so. So they, they, they all claim um, claim the location uh, immediately after the label uh, stack and before the original payload. So I think uh, we need to solve that problem, and uh, if. Uh, we still want to use those uh, solutions. Then we need to consider where we will uh, locate this PS PSD. Um, is um, after that or before that? And or another alternative solution is we try to unify uni unify the solution by you know uh, even trying to include those use cases into uh, the PSD. And reformat them uh, using the same mechanism. Then, uh, then we have a, a we will have a single PSD uh, based solution. We can support all the existing use cases. Uh, I think uh, from the long term, that's a better approach. Um, but if we still want to use those as is, then this is an issue for the. Any PSD uh, solution, so we need to consider. Um, okay, I think this is a just an uh, uh, example yes, slide. You, we have yeah. questions on the previous slide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg is raising his hand. Go ahead, Greg. Previous slide, please. This one, or no, this one. Yes, this one. So a um, couple of uh, comments that I would like to make. Um, um, IAM is uh, for limited domain. So I really don't see 
how uh, the limited domain uh, being defined in RFC 9197 for IEM and IEM direct export, uh, because it doesn't change this scope, uh, can be extended to uh, inter or domain scenario that you consider here. Because in my understanding, uh, it's uh, clear that IEM will be separate in each of these uh, domains that use different uh, data plane. So there will be no um, interwork, not expecting interworking collecting information, uh, especially when you are tunneling, because that would be a, really a security uh, concern, uh, exposing <coughs> the information from uh, the transit domain uh, to somebody else. Uh, second of all, I can you point me in which draft uh, this mechanism of um, copying or applying um, the information um, I am uh, header being discussed. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 we have a draft which is uh, expired now uh, talking about the uh, different uh, mo uh, uh, tunneling modes. So I, I can uh, send you the uh, link up to the meeting. Okay. So, so um, this is this is not a working group document, right? No, no. But, but, uh, but uh, uh, I mean the, the the uniform mode or path mode is uh, um, described somewhere else. I believe that's a. Uh, uh, already um, uh, 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 in the, some standard RFC. So that's, that's, not, that's no new. We just try to adapt that to the IOM context. Uh, but you're saying that you're trying to uh, stretch IOM to inter-domain <coughs> use case. So um, how, that, how that correlates yeah, for, no, no, uh, with yeah, the limited domain? Yeah, let me, this is related to your first question. Um, so it's about the it was a definition of the uh, limited limited domain. Um, if uh, I think uh, if uh, the whole network is under the uh, operation of single uh, network operator, uh, single uh, management domain, and it can be considered as, uh, still. I, I think this can be considered a limited domain. So since that's uh, under the chart of the uh, one um, uh, administrator, it can. Uh, uh, monitor the entire network uh, performance so to get the uh, hop-by-hop -hop performance. So in that case, uh, this is uh, at least now it's doable. And on the other hand, um, um, why we add this uh, limit domain constraint now is because, as you said, it's uh, very hard to uh, for the different operators uh, to to collaborate. There's a trust issue and there's a security issues. It's difficult to solve now, but uh, from the technical itself, I I don't think it's a, uh, it's unconceivable to uh, actually deploy this to the you know to cross uh, different domains, and uh, if there's a even higher level entity which can be considered considered a big limited domain, um, then everybody every smaller domain trust this entity then. It's certainly doable to do this, uh, uh, this kind of, to use this kind of technology. So, in, in my view, uh, it's all about how we define this limited domain. So, uh, we, you mean, who are we? Because, as, as my I'm, understanding, ITF is quite clear of what it uh, understands as a limited domain. Yeah, but uh, it, it, I, I think there's a <clears throat> Uh, virtually, uh, you, you know, if if I have a limited domain and I cover uh, different smaller um, net net for, net for operators, then they believe they they, they trust me, and uh, I, then I am limited to me. So I think that yeah, yeah, I so, think that this is this is not correct interpretation of ITF uh, understanding of uh, limited domain, I think it's a RFC 8799. So um, I really wonder uh, if this is a realistic scenario that we need to discuss. 
because uh, again, uh, it violates uh, their scope applicability of IAM and uh, defines, propose, describes based on the mechanism that is not really being agreed to how to do this. Um, so I don't see really see uh, any relevance um, to m &A. So I uh, don't think it will be helpful to use this use case in our discussion of uh, m and solution. Uh, uh, first of all, I, I think uh, even without thinking, um, uh, we have a big, um, you know, extend the definition of the limited domain and uh, even in a single domain, we could have tunnels uh, in the uh, in the single domain, right? And uh, then um, the scenario still applies. Okay, we can. Um, I disagree. Thank you. Yeah. I think uh, I'm basically done because this uh, this slide does show uh, some example how the you know the data will be added to the to the node in, in this scenario and uh, you can see finally we might have uh, up to 19 uh, uh, lrc worth of uh, <coughs> data but if we want to use a um, uh, iom trees uh, a pre-allocation uh, mode then we need to reserve that that space uh, for at, at all the nodes so which means every node need to handle up to 18 um, uh, words worth of uh, data. So that's uh, obviously too much for the in-stack encapsulation. So that's it. For you, uh, can you keep that slide uh, you know, for a moment? Mm -hmm. I have a question. So are you thinking of treating IOM data similar to the TTL, uh, you know, uh, there are in the pipe model and you know, in MPLS, when it's traversing IP packet traversing an MPLS, uh, you can either, uh, you know, uh, copy the IP TTL to MPLS or you basically uh, tunnel uh, the packet across. It will appear as one hop. So there are two modes, and I think you're hinting that you want to expose the IOM IP to MPLS and then from MPLS to IP again. Is, is yeah, that for the, yeah, Okay, for, for the particular um, field, I think uh, we there are some already existing um, uh, standards or drafts to describe the behavior of that. And for the IOM itself, is um, uh, it can collect a wide range of the data. For example, the timestamp uh, of the data, which I think is very important to measure the past latency or no latency. So for that is uh, independent of the, you know, what type of uh, node it is. Um, so so uh, as for the other fields like the TTO, I think uh, uh, those details we need to further uh, discuss how, how, how we'll put that in the data, collected data. Right, my my question: If if MPLS is one hop, you know, is considered as one hop, then I don't know why you're you would be exposing the red hops in uh, IOM, uh, you know, data. It would be confusing because all of MPLS cloud would be one hop. Uh, so what? One hop, even one hop. In the tunnel mode, in the yeah. So in the tunnel yeah. mode, all of MPLS will be one hop, and copying the red uh, content, which is from multiple hops, would be uh, contradictory, right? Uh, you say it's one hop. I still need to um, copy the um, uh, IOM header to the PSD. Um, because otherwise, MPS will be not aware of that, the existence of that, and uh, it can. Yeah, that, uh, that's the point I'm trying to raise. Only ingress and egress need to know about, uh, you know, the IP. They don't care about MPLS. So let's say you're you're trying to record the the uh, the delay or uh, you know across mm -hmm. MPLS. So 
So only ingress and egress need to do that. Uh, uh, but that uh, will be the, uh, I mean, that will be the um, pipe mode. I, I mean, here, I mean, the uniform right. mode. Assume we have a <clears throat> other uh, P node. <clears throat> uh, P, uh, <clears throat> uh, okay. then, then we will need to collect the data on those nodes. Then we, we need this mechanism. I, I get it. Okay, so the, the uniform mode is what... Uh, right, right, right. Okay. okay, any other questions to Huayu? Uh, <clears throat> um, one more question from me. So is it clear why the direct export method doesn't work in this case? I mean, the, the, you didn't make a case uh, unless I missed it. Why postcard method doesn't work? I think, uh, yeah, the reason here is uh, we, we cannot make a decision on why they, they, they want to use um, uh, IOM uh, trace mode because um, in IPv6, they, they can perfectly... Um, use that and uh, actually there's already active draft there to define uh, how, how to encapsulate this in the extension header. Um, so once they uh, it choose to use this then uh, in MPS, we have to have the equivalent uh, um, mechanisms to support that. I'm not sure, are you saying direct export works in this case? But uh, I mean, that's what I'm uh, uh, trying to ask. Does it work or does it not work? Uh, I, uh, I mean, <clears throat> uh, encapsulates that. And PS need to handle that uh, to support this uniform mode. Yeah, with but, ISD. Yeah. Uh, I, I yeah. Mean, <clears throat> So yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, I, then <clears throat> then we can um, go back to the four slides. I will, I will already talk about the pros and cons of each. So we cannot exclude any of them because uh, no, we don't I know. understand. Uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, but your slide three, I think, are there alternatives? Uh, there is a question there. Or, um, did we have a question? Are there other alternatives? Which which question? Uh, uh, I think that you know the use case itself can it be solved with other alternatives. That's what I'm trying to hunt uh, for. Yeah, the, maybe the, 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 yeah. I think the, yeah is my 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 answer is uh, um, semantically <clears throat> those um, those use uh, those solutions uh, different techniques can uh, solve the problem and achieve the acquire the same information right. But the mechanisms are very different, and uh, there is an alternative uh, uh, solution. Doesn't mean we can exclude the others and only stick to one, because um, as I said again, there will there are pros and cons. We cannot make a decision for the users. Okay, thank you. Um, I have I see Greg is raising his hand, so I'll let him ask his question. I appreciate Tarek's question because that was part of my question. But again, I, I would uh, not accept that we cannot uh, make a uh, decision on which option uh, to support in MPLS data plane. So uh, if uh, other data planes uh, believe that uh, it's perfectly fine for them uh, to support uh, other options. Uh, it's their decision. Uh, they can arrive at it based on their understanding of state of the art of uh, IPv6 uh, header support in the network, although it's being uh, discussed that uh, most of uh, many operators, they drop any uh, IPv6 packet that includes any extension header. Uh, so, so you know, go ahead and uh, 
imploded with the uh, information that is not relevant uh, to your customer uh, and customer would not pay for it. But I think that if we ought to make a decision on which option to support for uh, telemetry, uh, on path telemetry uh, protocol in MPLS mm -hmm. data. So it's on us uh, to make this decision. So uh, with good understanding of all implications that the particular mechanism protocol uh, will have on MPLS uh, data plane. So uh, I, I see it differently, uh, quite opposite to what you stated. Yeah, not that we cannot make a decision. I believe that we must make a decision. Thank you. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, so I, I think that's your um, personal opinion, but mine is um, that um, <clears throat> we are now just uh, defining the mechanism the, um, to hold the SD and the PSD. It should be, <clears throat> you know, um, not pre uh, uh, exclude any any possible potential <coughs> use cases um, because uh, uh, for for one thing uh, we already have this uh, solid use cases and for another thing we can note is um, you know makes a prediction for the future so that therefore uh, we we better makes uh, <coughs> our design extensible um, that uh, will be um, you know better. Um, to have it now, then I regret later. So I think that's a, the design philosophy you should obey. Um. I don't see anyone else raising their hands, and this is a useful presentation. Uh, we need to continue the discussion on, you know, uh, to get a consensus on the use case itself. Uh, um, there are people that raising their opinion that um, we can do it differently, but let's see if we can get a consensus on the mailing list on this. So, are you willing, why you to? Trigger an email on discussion on this. Uh, yeah, but uh, I think uh, I, if uh, anyone has questions, and please do uh, raise it uh, in the uh, email list. And also, I will maybe probably first thing I will do is share the uh, drops talking about uh, different tunnel modes uh, for okay. IOM. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, chairs, Loa, Nick, um, uh, looking at the agenda, I think we're done for today, unless you ha you want to talk about something else. No, okay. I think I'm done. Uh, All right. I th uh, one thing is we actually should try to trigger a discussion on the mailing list. I I think I have questions, but I have to do a little more thinking about it before I ask them. So it would be good. I, I can maybe initiate it when I uh, actually understand what I what I need to ask. But uh, mailing mailing list is good. We should use it. Okay, <clears throat> I agree with that. Um... Okay. All right. I think we can close the meeting uh, um, today. And uh, thanks for everyone who is still on the call. And we'll uh, see you next time we meet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.